Hey guys, welcome to Adam Lobo TV and in this episode we have with us Dato Jake Abdullah who is the strategic advisor for Media Prima Audio. And in this video it's going to be a little different because we want to talk about the technological point of view when it comes to 5G. Dato Jake, thank you so much for joining Just call us. Just me Jake. Okay, so Jake, I have several questions to ask okay, based on your experiences which relates to 5G based okay. on all the experiences that you have. So the first question is that given your extensive experience in the media industry, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the term 5G? Can you please quickly elaborate on how you think that 5G technology might impact the media landscape? Okay, so radio primarily is a very uh, traditional media, you know, so it is based on RF radio frequencies, transmitters and stuff like that. So we are still getting a grasp of 4G and LTE. So when you talk about 5G, many things come into play. But what is, does this mean for radio? So we have to understand the functionality of radio in the, in the first place. Think about connected cars, okay? So right now, radios are, you know, without a radio player, you're not gonna get to listen to radio. So the device has become imperative. So we are all are using our radio players to listen traditionally to radio, unlike in the States where they have digital audio. DABs. So cars come with DABs. So how I think that 5G is going to impact a couple of ways. One is connectivity. So to me, that means that right now, um, you know, radio operators can push their content via, you know, the availability of 5G. That means because of connected cars and cars, as cars become more and more connected, you go into your car, you switch on, just by data alone, you're listening to radio stations. What this does is also, I would see in the next five years, four or five years, the barrier to entry suddenly becomes, anybody now can own a radio station. That means Adam, you can have Adam FM push music out of this using your 5G. And if I'm connected, I can get, I don't need a transmitter because the barrier to entry is actually the transmission is very expensive. Suddenly you will see, apart from 50 radio stations in Malaysia, there could be 5,000 radio stations in Malaysia. So that could be the, you know, huge growth. Yeah. How do you view the evolution of 5G technology and its potential impact currently on media prima audio? I would, I would just say media alone. I, would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, you know, uh, narrow it down to media prima audio. I've always said this. Radio stations have passed, uh, I coined the phrase, uh, phrase uh, watch radio a long time ago, maybe a decade ago, you know. And I've always said that treatment of radio suddenly has evolved because if you ask a typical 15, 16 year old, do you listen to radio? They don't. But they watch radio because you can see the treatment on Instagram Reels, Instagram stories, then it's on TikTok, it's on Facebook Live, it's on YouTube, it's on that. So radio suddenly becomes a visual element. Now with the uh, improvement of, you know, the speeds and stuff like that, suddenly it opens up so many doors. What is going to actually change the dynamics of this is the requirement of the consumer and the requirement of the business or advertisers. Because what happens is, very clearly, we are, most radio stations, unlike the, pub, uh, the public radio stations like RTM, are dependent on revenue. So suddenly, because of the 5G availability and also the rapid speed and all that, things become a bit cheaper. Yeah. You know, so production becomes cheaper, you know, delivery becomes cheaper and all that. So this enables us to suddenly compete with the other digital prop propositions. Had 5G been available during your time at FAVE, in what ways do you think that it would transform business for FAVE specifically? Yeah, I think 5G is going to be predominantly very aggressive for the fintech industry. It's just amazing, you know, from QR codes to, to, to payment, you know, and all that. And just because the coverage is going to improve, you will see this push forward. When's the last time somebody actually used an ATM? When's the last time actually, you know, cash transactions? And why this is happening is because we have extensive 4G coverage. Now, if you get into 5G and, and, and beyond, it becomes faster. And I see this happening at an exponential phase. So I think what's going to happen, in fact, I know what's going to happen is payment aggregators like Fave and so forth will flourish. You know, so this is, going, is this going to be a boom for them? Yeah, yeah. What are the key strategic goals that you have for 5G integration in your current projects or the initiatives that you have in mind? 
Yeah, okay, so we must understand one thing, you see, um, content is content. 5G, 4G, 3G, Wi-Fi, whatever, they are all uh, avenues or vehicles of actually driving that. One, we have to get this part right, like I was just fascinated with your 6K video. So again, like I said, you know, the availability of this and also the available devices to actually house this suddenly becomes, you know, imperative. The same thing. I think media, media companies, broadcasters, agencies have to understand that because of 5G and timely because AI has suddenly become a very strong proposition to this, this will all change. We have seen also the evolution of AI. We were the first to introduce the AI DJ and then it becomes more and more human. Now with 5G and the speeds and all that, you'll see an almost lifelike personality. This also corresponds to TV broadcasts and stuff. So, Exchange of information, uh, exchange of data becomes rapid. So to me, the speed of actually delivering this becomes cheaper. So what are the challenges do you foresee for companies transitioning to 5G based on your past experiences, especially in this very rapidly evolving tech environment? Number one is to me, it is change is always very hard. You know, I remember the first time when Facebook was that came into the market and I spoke about this. In fact, I, I started the first Facebook for a radio station I used to work with for in Astro and everybody said, oh my God, this is going to, everybody's going to be on Facebook and nobody's going to work. So again, like I said, change is very, very hard to drive to people. But what companies need to do is to understand that if you're not going to change, you will be changed. Radio has survived because radio has the, the propensity to, to me is to morph you know, to adapt, you know, we've understood this. But you also have to understand that some people will say no, because old people, the older, I mean, I'm talking about old mindset, I'm, not, I'm close to 60, I'm still a young man, but the, they will push change, because it's hard to explain. How do you explain 5G to somebody who's like, oh, I don't want, I'm still using my, you know, my non-smartphone, you know what I mean? So again, like I said, it is acceptance, or they're going to be, they're, they're probably going to die off, yeah. Okay, how crucial do you believe that 5G technology will be for maintaining a very competitive edge in your current industry? I do not think that it is a competitive edge. I think that it is a necessity. These days when you get off your plane and you see 3G in a country that is you know, the third world, but you know, you're like, oh my god, I'm going to be slow. Honestly, this 5G thing is going to take off really fast. Either you're on board or you're not on board. It is not is whether can I take my time, you know, because technology revamps everything. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Like at one time there was this company called World Space that was doing digital uh, DAB. And we all thought that radio is going to die because DAB is going to come out. But the thing is they didn't understand that you can actually do so, listen to radio on, your, on the internet. You see what I mean? So technology drives change, not change drives technology. And it, if you're not on board, you're going to suffer. What advice would you give to businesses looking to embrace 5G based on your understanding and technology adoption and implementation? The key things that you have to understand is requirements. You know, what are your requirements? I love the fact that, you know, you look at SMEs and micro SMEs, they've understood that because of necessity, because of the cost of entry to, to marketing and, and so forth, traditional media is really expensive. So what they've done is they've gone to, they've gone to places like TikTok and, 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 and more rampantly in TikTok, especially when you read Malaysia is one of the most connected countries in the world, you know. So, they've understood that because of the barriers to entry, they've adapted this technology very fast. So it's going to be rampant, you know. You don't see that for TVs yet, you know, because people are using their devices to actually screen. So I actually believe there's going to be a boom on the SME side. Micro SME side, SME side is going to take off. So my advice to companies is adapt it really fast. Study what you require. Like from a radio aspect, I know that it's going to be more visual because audio is audio, right? So our video requirements need to improve. Our, you know, our dissemination needs to improve. So we base on that on requirement and how are we actually going to go the extra mile. To put it very simple, the difference between me and somebody else is going to be so small now. And that needs to come from 5G probably. Yes. Know? Yeah. So if you're a business, study what are your requirements and then and work backwards. Yeah. In your recent book, Book of Jake, mm. 
Do you draw any parallels between the evolution of 5G and the life lessons that you have learned wow. in your career? That's a very good question, actually, because um, it's embracing change, you know, and you, most people will push away change because they're very comfortable, you know. So even at my age, I adapt to change really fast. Like I was the first to actually latch on to AI and, you know, chat GPT when it first came out, says, this is mind blowing. So we push change, you know, so if I had to do a, a you know, parallel comparison to what I, you know, what I've written in Book of Jake, um, it is, don't push change away, you know. There's some things that are good, there's some things that are not good, you know, uh, like VR, for example, you know, or, or augmented reality didn't actually take off in the, the way we thought it's going to drive uh, technology, but there are other aspects of it. So the same thing, you have to understand what is working for you and embrace it and then use it for yourself, you know. You have to be the best judge of this. So that's the, probably the strongest parallel I'll drive line. So how do you think your book will be relevant to professional and enthusiasts interested in 5G and its overall applications when it comes to businesses and their daily lives? The book actually speaks about change a lot, you know, and that is the hardest thing. So again, like I said, what's next after 5G? You know, there's going to be 6G, 7G, 8G. You don't know how far this is going to go. But the book is relevant in that way because again, like I said, we tend to push change. We are afraid of change. We are all afraid of change. You know, think about it. You know, the 50-year-olds are adapting to change faster than, you know what I mean? Because we're so used to it. Then there are the, the natives, uh, digital natives, who for them it's next to nothing. They can, you know, fast. So what's going to happen is as Gen X goes off in the sunlight and Gen, Gen Y comes in, suddenly you will see the adaptation faster. So if you talk about the book, the book speaks about that. The book says we all have our, our lifetime. As long as we embrace change effectively, we're going to, you know, move forward. But there will be some people who will say, no, I don't want it. So 5G is something we cannot run away from. 5G is now. I saw your, your documentary or your, your, your video on hospitals using 5G. And all. I thought that was amazing because to me, it's in my mind, I see us walking through a door and it picks up all this information. By the time we reach the doctor, the diagnosis is done. You know, yeah. I saw a minority report like what, 25 years ago <laughs> and it's already happening. So I believe 5G is going to help us. What this is going to do is take away the menial tasks of people, you know, you'll see new jobs, prompt engineers become escalated and all. So I'm welcoming this, yeah. I love the comparison that you did with the 5G smart hospital because that for me was really crazy. That's brilliant. Yeah. Man. As 5G promises significant advancements in speed and connectivity, what role do you see it playing in bridging digital divides particularly in developing regions? See, FM is not available in certain areas because of train. Okay, so certain areas will not be able to get FM. So you will need 5G, you know, to get connected. Classic example is what's happening in Sabah, Sarawak. You know, the, the, there's a the Pan Bonio Highway cutting through Brunei, Sabah, Gusan, and then with the development of Nusantara, which is the Indonesian, new Indonesian capital. And that area is very mountainous. So if I use that as a parallel, 5G is going to be predominantly very important, especially across the highways. We all know that highways need a radio frequency or some form of uh, uh, you know, um, accessibility to information, highways, traffic, police, blocks, this, that you need. So this is inevitable. So to me is when we talk about areas where it is far reaching and all that, they are more accessible. India has got one of the, you know, is fastest growing connected population in the world. You know what I mean? Why? Because it's available. Everybody owns a smartphone. So two things we need to keep in mind. One is the cost. Cost of devices will be cheaper. You know, number two, cost of data is going to be cheaper. Also. Yeah, absolutely. So this is going to be drive usability, you know, and everybody's carrying it on their phone, on their, on their, their pocket and all that. So we can't run away from this. I think this, we, we keep saying underdeveloped countries, I think they, it rampant growth in, in knowledge, in technology, and you can already see it. You can mm. already see it, yeah. Final question that, in light of the rapid advancements in 5G technology, how do you anticipate 5G further influence virtual reality or augmented reality, 
particularly in the field of media and entertainment. Oh wow, so uh, I'm not an expert in VR and AR but I, I like AI a lot so um, and I've been watching how China has developed you know, like I said, AI influences. You know, I was reading the ADEX report for next year that one of the biggest booms is uh, going to be social influencing via AI. So with speeds like this, so you know, back in the day it was buffering and stuff like with speeds like this, it'll be seamless. And why? Because the cost of adaptation is going to be lower. And you can already see this happening. I foresee AI news readers, AI, you know, uh, influencers, AI driven this. I can see all this happening already. China is so ahead of the curve and, you know, they're leaving us behind. And I think we have to learn from that. I'm very excited about the 5G growth. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, we all are grasping what is 5G, what is 5G, what is actually speed. It's speed, it's actually propensity of data, it's actually low latency and better quality, you know. I welcome it, yeah. Okay. I guess that's all. Thank you so much for thank your you, time, you, Jake. You. And yes, this is Dato Jack Abdullah, who is currently the strategic advisor for Media Prima Audio. But of course, head on to www.bookofjake.my to check out his latest book. But if you have any other technological questions, feel free to comment at the comment section below. My name is Adam Lobo, together with Dato Jake Abdullah, and we will see you in the next video.